Episode 51, True Friendship. This is the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast, home of the Seven Days of Sex Challenge, featuring your hosts, the authors of the groundbreaking new book, Stripped Down, Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And tonight we're going to be talking about true friendship. But we always start off with a recap of the week. And there's been a lot going on this week. There has been. We, uh, I, I think we start off with our voicemail. You want to start off with the well, voicemail? Yeah, because okay. you know, yep. I, lo- I love our we did it. You got it. And we got another one. So here it goes. Hey, Tony and Elisa, this is Jan. Just wanted to call and let you know that we completed it. Yay! The day challenge. Um, although I will, just to be brutally honest, um, it was probably one of the hardest things we've done. We only made it 26 out of the 60 days due to a variety of reasons. Travel, um, we actually had to do a couple pregnancy tests, which was a little scary, but we, Understand. we made it through okay. So um, what we gained from it, though, even though it was just 26 days um, out of 60, it probably was like 25 more than normal, but um, Yay! It, we just we became closer, and we were able to talk about it. And at the point that exhaustion hit in and we were frustrated with um, the process and tired um, is when we just kind of said, you know, I know we committed to 60 days, but... We adopted in the um, intimacy lifestyle that you guys have talked about several times. Amen and that, that just really calmed us both down and even brought us closer together to right where on. we are able to talk about things that we weren't able to talk about before. Um, when I first started listening to you guys, I really didn't get the whole communication, how that could be linked to the intimacy, but it is because it's a mm-hmm. form of intimacy. And mm-hmm. when both person's love tanks are being filled, um, you know, the ultimate goal is met, which is being able to be close and talk or just be together. So mm-hmm. I thank you guys for that. Um, love listening to your podcast, trying to catch up. The last month's been crazy. So um, today marked our 60 days. So I wanted to call in and just thank you guys for putting it out there. And um, we were really brave and we embarked on it. Um, crazy. But loved it. So uh, thank you guys so much. And um, I look forward to keep listening. Yay, Jan and your hubby. Um, So excited for you guys. And loved hearing that the takeaway was, one, that you were intimate and had sex much more often than you normally would have in a 60-day period. And two, that you realized and strengthened your communication. Um. And I think, you know, I think it, it was cool, though, that instead of being discouraged, 26 out of 30 days is is really... Days. Uh, well, no, they did 26 out of 30. 60. Oh, 60. Oh, 26 oh, out of 60. Oh, oh, I thought she said 26 out of 30, and then they didn't do the second month. No, listening years. 26 out of 60. Yes, I'll put on my... I, I understand. I, I just happened to think that I thought that the 26 was in... Okay, that's still good. Okay. I like it. But the reality is, is that, I mean, even, you know, for the average couple, if you go twice, was it four times a month, once a week? What's what's the average? Once a week, I think. Once a week. So that would have been eight times. So they tripled. Right. What's being oh, done. Uh, oh, I, I, think, I think the big takeaway, too, is that they found that the intimacy lifestyle is a way to live. Right. You can, you can, you went for the 60 days and found that, wow, exhaustion. Yes, I've been there. We both know that it. You it's get, hard. You get exhausted um, physically, mentally, emotionally. And so for you to have an avenue, though, to go, wait a minute, we can still do this, mm-hmm. which is still beneficial to your marriage, is so right on. Absol- absolutely. Y- and you know, and I think that's that's huge for those of you out there wondering, well, could I do it? Can I not? You know, listen to what Jan said there is... They went after it, but they didn't just give up and blow it away because it didn't work. They found another avenue to still make the sexual intimacy a part of their lives. Right. And that's, so I thought that's that was huge. great. Jan, thank you for calling in. We love 
getting those we did it phone mm-hmm. calls if you are listening out there and you've done it we want to hear from you that's right give us a call on the uh caller number it's 858-876-5663 we want to know what's going on out there i mean obviously you know last week we had lester and reagan and they did the 60 days more power to them i'm mm-hmm. i'm still blown away um by mm-hmm. that but you know and then we've got Jan and her husband this week who did 26 out of 60 and look at how both couples two different scenarios both couples gained so much from the experience right. that if you're waiting to say oh, I wonder if this is going to work for me I'm going to challenge you to say you know what just do it yeah just do it make stop, it happen stop wondering if it's going to work and know that it will in right. some way shape or form and you know if 60 days is daunting Scale back. Go seven, 30 days. Go seven. two weeks. Go seven days. I mean, we had a lot of marriages change in seven days. When we did the seven days of sex challenge. Right. So, we really did. You know, and this is a time where the things we talked about last week, life gets a little stressful. Maybe you forget to make your spouse a priority. Here's a simple way to do it. Take the seven days of sex challenge. <laughs> yeah. Bring that into your marriage before Christmas and see if you can't bring some of that closeness back that might be missing right now. Right. Um, Good things that happened this week for me. I'm thinking, you know what? I had a, I had a really good week. I had some really cool phone calls, a, a number of interviews that we will be putting out on fit marriage. And one of the coolest ones, if you guys haven't checked it out on the fit marriage show, it's my video interview series that I do with health professionals, personal trainers, wellness guys. But my last one, episode five was with Robert Panzer of cycling camp, San Diego, a good friend of mine. And he wrote a book called cycling fast. Anyways, I put up the interview folks liked it. It so happened though, that his publisher got the information that he was interviewed and happened to go, Hey, I loved the interview format. I, I really enjoyed it. We have other authors who we would like for you to consider interviewing. And I was just on cloud nine. And so happens, Elisa was home and she jumped on the computer and goes, well, let's see who they have. (laughs) And this publishing house called kinetic human kinetic, human kinetics, human kinetics. They have a number of amazing authors in the the health and and fitness. And one of, one of their authors has over a million book sold so the pr Yay for fit yeah, marriage the public the publicist just asked if i'd be interested in, in interviewing any of their authors and so i happened to just give her about five and one of the guys was the guy who sold a million copies might as well go for the gusto and get them on the show if i can absolutely so absolutely. that that was really that was really cool highlight for me yeah you were a guest blogger on uh, i was anonymous eight. Oh yeah <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, I was. I, yeah. I, I have to take you all the way back a week ago. That was know, Monday that was last long. week. Yeah. If, if you guys didn't see it, you can jump on our Facebook fan page. I'll put a link to it. But uh, did a thing on porn with Anonymous 8. It was interesting, to mm-hmm. say the least. Some of the com- comments that were coming back. And it really it really shook me there for a little bit. So I put something there on Facebook. And I want to thank Ron and Shauna. Who else commented there? Jackie. For what you guys said, it just it just gave me a little grounding, which is what I needed at that point in time. And something that Ron brought up that I thought was really good is it's it's been a while since we talked about the porn issue, mm-hmm. and I think it's coming up more and more. And we have a a letter, an email that we received even this week that we'll read here shortly about it. That I think after the first year we'll probably jump on that issue again. Um, it, it, it's big, it, it's big, and every time we talk about it, it just seems to hit home Mm -hmm. so it 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 just is big and so i talked to my pastor and i think i mentioned this before too with bringing pornography to center stage at our church Mm -hmm. and we're still talking about that and i actually emailed them the comments that were there on anonymous eight and we we had a little conversation there and it seems we're working towards it it's a process. It's a, you know, it's definitely, it's one of those topics that um, can be very polarizing. 
And we saw that mm-hmm. in a lot of the comments um, that Tony had received in reaction to his blog. And, you know, like Tony said, I mean, we've we've done a couple episodes over the last year on pornography. And every time we do, um, we receive so many emails back from all of you, emails, voicemails, just sharing similar stories yeah, to what we've gone through or, you know, knowing someone who's been in that situation that, you know, some of these comments saying that, you know, pornography is not an addiction and, and these other comments that were on the blog were, um, yeah, just kind of made you scratch your head. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, the, I just, I, I don't know, folks. I, I, I don't know how a, a lot of it was coming down. Well, there must be something wrong with me because if I can't handle it. Or if, if it's, there's a problem in our marriage. And, right. And, you know, my response back to that was Tony was addicted to pornography long before he ever met me. Right. Pornography came into our, pornography was a part of our marriage before I was in the sense that it was a part of him before we ever were married. Yeah. I, you know, I, and that addiction was there. And so to say that it, there was a problem in our marriage and you know, that I couldn't handle having pornography in our marriage. You're right. I couldn't pornography was destroying my marriage. And there may be those of you out there listening who you and your spouse view pornography together and it's not a problem or you don't want to acknowledge that it's a problem or maybe you don't know the extent to which your spouse is viewing pornography. Mm-hmm. Um, these will all be things that we will tackle when we do that next episode. Yeah. Uh, Let me do this email from Tim. Oh. Our, our good friend, Tim, he emailed us on a, uh, the 50th show. And I just wanted to read this real quick. I will keep this email shorter, much shorter than my last email. And as all of you know, Tim loves to write and call and leave these awesome long voice messages. And if you want to, you can too. We love them. I haven't finished listening to this week's podcast yet. My week is a little off since I surprised Lisa, his wife, and took the day off work yesterday to spend with her on her 40th birthday. She is having a tough time dealing with turning 40, and hopefully I helped keep her mind off it to ease the pain. She will learn. The 40 is not a big deal. Been there, done that last year. I agree, man. My grandmother's 88, so she has many years to go. Anyway, the real reason I am writing is to say congratulations on the 50 milestone. That is quite an accomplishment, and looking back, I can't believe I have been listening that long. Hope you guys have a great Christmas and even better New Year than the past one. Gotta go. My wife is texting me, and I always love to see what she has to say. Tim. That's right. Okay, but you gotta read the last little bit there. Okay, almost always. (laughs) With a smiley face. I think we all can relate to that. Absolutely. There are times when we see our spouses calling or texting us, and we're going, ah, no. (laughs) <laughs> so ah. yeah, there have been times like that this week with you wow transition right there boom everybody get a little whiplash from uh from that go ahead what do you no, want to say I'm, I'm no i'm just saying there have just been times this week where i felt that way with you oh, okay i feel that there are times when we're just the, the 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 when i notice it the most is when we are disconnected in our communication and then something happens and I got to react to it. Such as? No, I just, I just, there are times when we're up late and oh, okay. we're not getting in some good conversation, which, which was, has happened this past week or so, mm-hmm. as I've been doing a lot of stuff with Fit Marriage and getting these last couple of products together before 2011. And I just, I just noticed that, you know, we're not in our, we're not in that routine of just being able to sit down and have our good conversations. Um, you know, we haven't done a devotional in a, gosh, four months, it three been months, a couple months. Yeah. Couple easily. Months. I, I think that's because we try and do a nighttime devotional and that's yeah, right, that doesn't work. right now that that time doesn't work for us. No, nope. it, so. it doesn't. But you got to figure that one out. Can, can I jump back to the porn thing and read Annalisa's? Oh, yeah. 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 You, you jumped ahead with Tim. and so I Sorry. Won't. That's OK. I just want to go back and and read this. This was. um a message that we got from Annalisa and she said, I began listening to your podcast about four months before my husband and I got married. Y'all were everything I was looking for in marriage advice. I could listen instead of read all real life experiences. You had children and first and foremost, y'all are faith based. I listened off and on for about two months. Then you did the segment on the porn addiction. That segment hit home for me. My now husband and I have 
had been together for five years before we got married, but one thing he always had a problem with was porn. He began when he was in junior high and never let it go. Yet he is a great, godly man. We had many struggles with it, and it always ended up with him saying, It won't happen again. It happened so much that I could tell when he had been watching it just by the way he acted or his voice over the phone. When I popped the question last November, he had been off for about six months. After we got married, I found websites in the computer history and just about called our marriage quits. I wasn't going to be his second best. Then I remembered this podcast and went back to it, and we both listened, and we both decided that parental locks set up by someone other than, the, uh, other than us on our home computer to keep the porn away, even if he was tempted. We also did away with smartphones. No internet on the phone equals no porn on the phone. We listen to y'all as a couple in the evenings after the kiddo is in bed asleep. We are in the middle of the 60 days of sex. It was one of my favorite podcasts y'all did, and it doesn't hurt because we are also trying for number two. Thanks for putting life out there for everyone to listen to. And Lisa, thank you Mm -hmm. for being a listener. Thank you for um, sharing your story with us. And and thank you for sharing this podcast with your husband. Yeah. Um, It always means a lot to us to hear that you guys are sharing our podcasts. You know that's the way the word gets out. But to find something that you so strongly believe in and to share that with your spouse and to see that, you know what, it, through that podcast, you realize some of the major changes that you needed to make with the parental locks on the computer, with getting rid of your smartphones. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, most people are not going backwards with technology. But for you to realize that having the internet on your phone was a problem and just to say, look, I, th- here's the only thing I need my phone to do. We don't need to have internet on our phones. That's right. huge. And, and that's a commitment on both of you to make the marriage work. And, you know, hats off to you. Totally. Can't, can't wait to hear about, uh, can't wait to hear that you're pregnant with baby number two. Yeah. That's always, 60 days of sex is good for that. If, if you <laughs> want babies, yes. If you want babies. <laughs> I don't want any more babies. Well, that's when you take precaution. That's right. That's the flip side of the 60 days of sex or the seven days or the 14 or whatever you decide to do. If you're not looking to make a baby. Right. Use protection. Right. We had a little one here Friday night, though. We did. We had a yeah. five-month-old here? Five-month-old, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, some friends of ours, actually, I was going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay. We'll talk about it now. Okay. Um, well, because it tied into the topic for the night. That's what I was going to talk about later. But okay. okay. So Friday night, we had we had our fi- we had five <laughs> kids in our house. I guess this is part of our week, though, isn't it? It is. Okay. And Can uh, it be brought up twice? Sure. Okay. So good friend of mine... Um, her husband is in the Marine Corps and they are actually getting ready to be transferred to another Marine Corps base here in Southern California. And so his squadron was doing the hail and bail, which is his farewell. And they have three little ones, five, two and a half and five months. And she couldn't find a sitter. And so I'm like, ah, just bring the kids over. And so she'd originally, she wasn't sure if she was going to leave the baby with us. That was all kind of up in the air, but they had a crazy week. And so she shows up, she and her husband show up with the kids and, and uh, she's like, what did we decide on the baby? And I looked at her and I said, why don't you leave the baby with us? So we ended up with our almost eight-year-old, two five-year-olds, the mm-hmm. two-and-a-half-year-old, and the baby. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, all of you that have more than two kids, my hats are off to you. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. It was... Um, yeah, God bless you. It was an adventure. Serious. I, I, yeah. Uh, Everything from their little personalities to... Well, and I mean, obviously, they they come from di- all different parents, so... Well, two sets of parents. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like we let our kids jump on the couch, and so they walk in and see their kids jumping on the couch, and they're like, Wah! and I'm like, no, it's okay here, because our living room is like a playroom. I mean, yeah, right now, that's what it is for Tony us. and Alex play football, and we wrestle, and the kids, you know, dive bomb off the couches, and... um. And then we got to see, you know, a very different side of Abby. Abby absolutely loves babies up until her mommy spends lots of time holding another one. And she didn't dig that one She did bit. not by the end of but the that, evening. But Alex, on the other hand, was just very loving. and Alex kept wanting to hold the baby. And I have never seen that side of Alex with babies. Yeah. He's it's like, interesting. Yeah, considering today was his, we had, we had his eighth birthday party with all the boys and the friends. And, and I had to get in there and 
get in his face a little bit and tell him He's to coughing a little attitude with his mother a little chip on his shoulder yeah a I little sass in the attitude we were playing football a little tackle a little touch and he was just getting a little out of control there a little big for his britches yeah so yeah, it, it was so. interesting so yeah so five kids on friday night birthday party today um, and, and the thing about friday night though is if you're looking to get out and you have kids and you're like, I can't make a date night happen, find a friend, do a swap. I know I was talking with somebody on Facebook. I think it was Carrie. She and her husband were going out and they had dropped off their son to a friend's house and they were going to do, uh, take their friend's kid Saturday night. Okay. You know, so it was, it was still in the same week. You know, so they got out Friday night. The friends got out Saturday night. You, you know, there are so many things you can do to make that happen. Fine. Yeah, just don't make excuses. Yeah. I mean, good grief. Yeah. You've got friends. If you belong to a church, there might be somebody in the church or there might be teenagers in the church. There might be neighbors. There might be, there might be teachers in your children's schools, mm -hmm. preschools, elementary schools that would be happy to help out. Um, Definitely try to find some time, especially right now. If you can just get a little alone time just with your spouse. I know when the kids were younger for us, especially right now with Christmas coming on, it was so much fun when one of the sets of the grandparents, and I think it was your folks when they would come out, when they had come out and visited for a Christmas or two. I remember them just taking the kids and you and I were just able to just go to Toys R Us by ourselves. Yeah. And, and that was just... I mean, we haven't gone Christmas shopping together in years. I know. I usually just do everything online now. Yeah, you do. <gasps> I do. But yeah, but what it was. Where were you gone? Thursday night you had a show? Uh, kids and I yes. go, kids and I went to go pick up your present. And shockingly enough, they so, my, so my present is the first wrapped present under the Christmas tree, which, okay, keep in mind, Tony and I have been married 14 years and I've had kids <laughs> almost eight years. And this, I think, is the first year that my present is the first present under the Christmas tree. Yay. Yay. Hats off to Tony. Everybody clap for Tony. And uh, the next big surprise after the fact that my Christmas present's the first one under the tree is that neither one of my children has told me what it is. So it's been there for four days and the kids have not said a word to me. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. Here's the thing though. Okay. So we went to Kohl's to pick this thing up. I don't think that gives it away. Okay. Keep. Uh, okay. No. No. We. So. So we go to Kohl's to pick this up. I have to ask you this because here, co here comes my big surprise right now. The kids won't tell me what it is, but Tony's going to blab it to everybody no. on the podcast. Excuse go me. ahead. Excuse me. I got like my nose is bugging, but um, we're walking in, and so we're walking by the men's department. Okay. And there's this dude like walking rack to rack, no shirt on, trying on shirts. Different. <laughs> I was like, what? I don't know that I've ever seen that in Kohl's or any other department store. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting and very efficient, you know, <laughs> because you don't really have to pick out a couple because you only can bring, what, five in there at a time or whatever. So yeah. you're very efficient. I mean, you walk to a rack, you try on a couple of shirts. If you like one, you, you put it to the side. If not, you go to the next rack. Okay. So begs the obvious question, at least in my mind. Is this a guy that should have been walking around without a shirt on? Um, you know, the racks, the racks were sort of blocking him. So I, I couldn't see. I mean, I could, yeah, you could see. You can guesstimate. Should he have been walking around without a shirt Probably on? Probably not. Okay. I enough mean, said. Enough said. I, you know, I mean, there are some people that should walk around. You know, some guys should. I don't know that a guy should ever walk around a department store without a shirt on. But some guys, it's not. It's more uncomfortable than others. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I, I just found it interesting as well. Wow, kids didn't tell me about that. Did they see it? I don't know. Okay. You know, I, I sort of steered them away from it a little <laughs> bit. So. Say, Abby would have told me if she'd seen that. That would have been. And the other thought is, is you know, does this dude like, if he needs to try on different pairs of pants, does he just like walk around without his pants on? Well, you know, let's uh, yeah, that's weird. I thought was that's weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> wow, some of the things that I don't find out about until we get on the air with you guys. Right. Um. Okay, so here's the funny thing that we did this week. We went and looked at our iTunes. Um, oh, one thing I want to bring up, though, too. Okay, you go first. <laughs> What's the little jewelry you got going on? What's the little jewelry? 
<laughs> I wanted to bring it up before iTunes. Why? Because we might get like reviewed on iTunes because of this. Well, what would you like to say about it? I'm not saying anything about it until you say something about it. Okay, so I've got a little bling going on. Where? Below the belly button. Nice. <laughs> Below the belly button and above the thigh. Let your imagination do what it will. All right. A little rhinestone action. And this rhinestone action is called what? It's called vajazzling. Okay. Except that's the official term. I just did it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's the purpose of this? Decoration. I mean, it's like wearing a pair of earrings, just in a different mm-hmm. location. Got it. Wearing a, you know, it's like the kids get their little tattoos, their little rub-on tattoos from the birthday parties. Mm-hmm. Same kind of concept, but with rhinestones. Got it. Got it. Now, what would you like to say now that you totally put me on the spot and I wasn't expecting that to come up? Could a guy do that? Sure. Really? Why not? I don't know. You laughed at my silk robe and my bearskin rug. Oh, well, I thought you I didn't realize we were talking about you specifically. I thought you were just oh. talking generalities. Okay. I, yes. Generally speaking, yes, guys could. You, it would probably make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Here's the deal. I think your body is fine the way it is. I don't think it needs to be shaved. I don't think it needs to be. Well, no, I'm shaving my chest. I, I'm shaving my chest. Okay. I, I have come to that conclusion after looking at myself in the mirror today. <laughs> oh, just today? as opposed to every other day when you look at yourself in the mirror that's about every three days you look at yourself in the mirror every day dude yes i look at my face in the mirror every no. Day. no 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 ever since you got the six-pack you're like wow no i do not I do that every good. day get out of here you might not say it out loud but i know it's going <laughs> through your head oh <laughs> uh, yeah every once in a while it does you know i have a little ego problem every once in a while and that's it's those large are, yeah those are the times when i just gotta go okay you know what it's not all about me Okay. Can I talk about iTunes now? Bring us back down to earth. Yeah. So if you do enjoy our show, we would appreciate it if you did go on to iTunes, rate it, leave a review. It just shows other folks that do come on iTunes and across us on iTunes. Many of you have found us because of iTunes. I mean, it's just truly amazing when we read these and, you know, I think there's like 18 or something, but a lot of you guys have found us through iTunes. You put marriage in or Christian marriage and we pop up, which is just really cool. It would just, it just helps to broaden the audience to reach more Christian married people. If you guys go on there and you review it and you leave a rating, iTunes loves that we get pushed up higher And that way we can reach other Christian couples out there that might be in the rut you were in before you came and started listening to us. And that's what it's about. It's about bringing godly people together to realize that this marriage thing isn't always easy. It isn't always fun, but we're here to help you along and just share a little bit about what we've been through. So, so I just wanted to read a couple of these because we hadn't looked at this in a while. And so, um, there was a, comment on september 10th from sharice and she said you know the subject was got me back on track and she said i had one and a half feet out the door when i found this podcast they are so easy to relate to and help me recognize what i can do better to save my marriage i save my favorites on my ipad to ipod to refocus they don't have all the answers but don't profess to their commitment to each other is is inspiring bless you and keep up the good work so very excited to hear from that comment from sharice And then there's one just uh, December 1st by Renee and her subject. This is the reason that caught my attention. It said modern day Adam and Eve. And uh, so, of course, I was like, what is she? What is she talking about? And so here you go. One Extraordinary Marriage podcast is voiced by both husband and wife in which I hear about the joys and trials of marriage and even better how to overcome certain obstacles. Tony and Elisa are honest and transparent in each discussion, which I truly appreciate. I can only describe this couple as a modern day Adam and Eve because of their understanding of the design, purpose, and pleasure in marriage. Yet, because they live in today's world and not a garden, as do the rest of us, they face challenges in marriage and earnestly resolve them. You will be blessed by their ministry. Thank you both for sharing your podcast, Lives and Heart with Strangers. You are truly impacting lives, marriages, and families for the better. Thank you. Thank you. That was just... Again, I wasn't sure where she, when I saw the subject, I was like, modern day Adam and Eve, what are we being compared to? Um, but it's it's always nice to hear that 
you're able to take something away from the podcast. Yes. Um, I, I think you can tell listening to us most of the time, we have a pretty good time doing this even when we put each other on the spot. And, um, you know, it's just, it is a ministry for us. We, like I said earlier, appreciate you sharing this with others um, because if it has impacted your life, chances are you know someone who could benefit from listening to this podcast. And so thank you to all of you who over the last, you know, 11, 11 and a half months have been sharing this podcast. You have truly made a difference. It, it's really not us. It's you guys sharing it mm-hmm. um, and getting the word out. You have made a difference in who knows how many marriages, but know that every time you click share or you like us on your Facebook fan page and your friends are like, Oh, what's that about? Um, you're impacting others. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so one last thing before we get into the, get into the topic, Tony, Hmm. what was the first thing that attracted you to me? Question of the week. Oh, you dog. Oh, got you. You I was supposed to give you that one. No, no, no. He did this to me the other day. So the last two weeks he puts up the question of the week, right? That, cause that's one of the many, many, I really am just a voice on the microphone with this. Tony does all the other work. Yes. And so the last two weeks he's put up the question of the week and we've gotten phenomenal feedback. If you haven't checked us out on Facebook lately, click on to one extraordinary marriage and um, go to these two questions of the week. You'll see, you know, 20 to 25 comments. Well, this week it was, you know, what was the one? Well, and last week was the most memorable moment in your wedding on your wedding day. Mm -hmm. Lots of good answers there. Lots of, Oh my gosh. I just love reading those. What was the one thing that attracted me to? What was the, the, your question was, what was the first thing you noticed about your spouse that attracted you to him or her? He asked me this two days ago because he was going to throw it. He was going to throw me uh, on the mic tonight. I know. And and I totally forgot. (gasps) Tables are reversed. Wow. You know, what what was it that we did a lot of that that first summer? We sat, we sat in front of a TV and we watched uh, OJ Simpson Mm -hmm. and World Cup. Uh And we talked. And I think a lot of it for for me was conversation. Oh, yeah. Dude, we had. dude, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am giving him a hard time because when he asked me this question on Saturday, that was my answer. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't use the conversation thing. I said, what was the first thing but you, you noticed? Went, you went back. You went back into the question I, and saw how people answered and you said that but, was okay. Uh, exactly. But what I'm saying is that when I asked, when you asked me this question, that mm-hmm. was not an acceptable answer. So try again. TikTok. Your, no, TikTok. your, your beauty was, was captivating. You're trying not to burst out laughing no, right now. I am serious. Remember when we, we had those pictures of, of us when we went out on our first official date? That took three hours for the girls to get me ready. Right. Well, I mean, but your, your beauty was still captivating. Okay. I would say over the years. Okay. Truth, here it comes. No, no, Truth. no, and I'm no, no. I'm just saying, over the years, you are like a fine wine. You have just you have just aged very well, and maybe I notice you more than back then. I mean, back then I was a 21 year old college kid that was usually drunk. I mean, to me, that summer was a summer of just let's have fun. Never had the intention of meeting my wife you know it was i was getting off of a relationship i had turned 21 i was living in boulder colorado i mean i was drunk i think more nights than i wasn't during that True. summer mm-hmm. um and so to say one thing for me is is tough I, the conversations were good I'm just laughing because I, that was my answer. That was my first official answer. And you gave me such a hard time. And now that's the one that you share with everyone. Copycat. No. Yes. No. <laughs> okay. I, the funny part of that is that I remember Tony and I had been hanging out for probably about three or four weeks that summer. And I said something about his brown eyes. And I don't know if any of you have noticed um, this is how observant I was that summer. If you've looked at any of the pictures of Tony, Tony has bright, bright blue eyes, bright blue eyes. And so it was this huge 
laugh that we had repeatedly and have over the years of the fact that I was spending all this time, we were having these really deep conversations and... And we'd be kissing and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, your brown eyes. And he's like, look at my eyes. (laughs) (laughs) It still makes me laugh. You know, Mm -hmm. I was just blinded by how handsome he was with his shaved head. No. That's not 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 even true. Yeah. Because I had a shaved head, like a big old fat goatee. I've got to see if I can find... No. I've got to see if I can find a picture. Big old goatee. Mm -hmm. What was your most memorable moment on our wedding day? On our wedding day? And see, these are questions you guys should be asking each other too. See, Elisa and I, I mean, honestly, this is Elisa and I just running through this behind the mics to share with you guys what it's like. This is what it's like. I mean, it's it's having fun. It's laughing. It's not being serious and, and you know, good, bad, or ind- it, it's just having fun. Some of these are just, questions are just there so you can, so you can just sort of, Find out again what your spouse desires about you or what they remember that you may not remember. It's not good or bad or indifferent. It's just, it's what it is. Mm. Most memorable. Um, I think the first one was we got married at a winery and there was a hill leading into the winery. Mm-hmm. And Maurice I was a, Curry. at Maurice Curry Winery in Temecula. And I was arriving in a horse drawn carriage. And so as we crested the hotel or <laughs> crested the hill, as we, you, Oh, I was with I was with my driver. Oh, okay, yeah, I wasn't in it though. You weren't in it. Okay, but as I crested the hill with my driver, whose name coincidentally happened to be Elisa, um, she turned and looked at me and she said, "Wave, this is your day," and they are all looking at you. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, I do the little princess wave, and um, that was just the first. I think that was the first time it really hit me that this was this was our day, mm-hmm. a- and that this was this was about us you know all the months of planning and whatnot came down to to these minutes and then i remember um the the funny one okay well there were lots of funny ones but during the ceremony was the okay, woman okay my question was the <laughs> most memorable. okay we'll, we'll talk about our wedding another okay. day well I, can i give you mine oh sure i actually have two one <laughs> One. Wow, he is just all fired up tonight. I go and want to talk, and he's like, "No, no, no, I got to talk." But I've got two. One <laughs> was my dad after I was sitting up there for about oh ten minutes, and my dad stands up and goes, "She's not coming," in front of everybody. I was a little late. Yeah, and then the other one was my aunt Carol brought her friend Miriam, who was just a blabbermouth that just drove me nuts, and I wanted to like throw a plate of cake in her face. She wasn't so much a blabbermouth. I think she had too much wine at the winery. I think. All right, blabbermouth or not, man, she she was like the guest you didn't want at your your wedding. Yes. And I didn't want her there, and she was driving. We didn't. Me know. We didn't. Know. Yeah. Hindsight. I know. Hindsight. I, I'm just saying. 14 years later, that's 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 one of those other memorable. Moments. Oh yeah, we talked about her a lot. All right. We, got, let, we need to talk hit, about our topic tonight let, let's before hit the, the show's let's over. Hit, I know. Let's hit the topic. So topic tonight is true friendship. And um, this was demonstrated to me, to us, most most strongly by our eight-year-old son, almost eight-year-old son. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a friend who does not like chocolate. You know, another little boy does not like chocolate, like no chocolate cake, no chocolate candies. And so last year, as Alex was getting ready for his birthday, he invited this little boy to the party and... Um, you know, we're talking about what kind of cake or cupcakes. And mom, he's like, mom, we can't have chocolate. He doesn't eat chocolate. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, that's, that's fine. We'll make, so fast forward a year, same little boy is coming to Alex's birthday party this year. And for Alex's birthday this year, he wanted a football and we did a football shaped cake. He was having a football party and I'm thinking football, chocolate frosting. You know, if you don't want a chocolate cake, that's fine, but we'll do chocolate frosting because that way it'll mm-hmm. be brown. And Alex gives me this look like mom, my friend's coming to the party. He doesn't like chocolate, like no chocolate. And, you know, it hit me, you know, because we've had this little boy, the boys have been friends for two years now. And, right. um, the lengths that Alex is willing to go to for his friend, he, he would, you know, even though Alex loves chocolate mm-hmm. and even though there are probably, I mean, we had six boys there tonight or this afternoon, there were probably five other boys that love chocolate because he knows his one friend does not love chocolate no chocolate on the cake we did have chocolate um in the ice cream it was mint brownie ice cream and then we had little brownie bites and little brownie bites and there was like a 
cookie dough ice cream, but the cake itself, no chocolate. And it got me to thinking, I'm like, okay, what can I learn from the fact that my eight year old is willing to sacrifice, although he doesn't see it as sacrifice. You know, he just makes changes for his friend. Mm-hmm. You know, how many times do I, you know, in my relationship with Tony or my relationship with my other friends, I'm like, oh, no, you got to change for me. Instead of looking at the other way around and saying, you know what, if I was really a friend, I would just do it. No expectation of repayment or reciproca- reci- reciprocity. No expectation of, you know, there's going to be this expectation of gratitude or anything like that. He just does it because he knows this will make somebody else happy. Mm-hmm. And and I'm just like, oh my gosh. You know, once again, humbled by my children and and just brought to brought to task on what I'm not doing in my own relationships or what I could be doing better. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's one of those things too, where that same friend that I um, mentioned earlier who had her three children over at our house um, on Friday night, as they're making this transition from one military base to another Christmas has been up in the air for them. And we're not, we're spending Christmas with Tony's family. And so I start making phone calls to the relatives saying, Hey, is there room for five more? Can we, can we do this? Um, because the other, the other issue with friendship is that sometimes, and I don't know, not being a man, I don't know if this is hard for men too, but sometimes for women, it's very hard to ask even our closest friends for help. Is that a problem for men? Um, you know, for me, there, there are definitely times. Yeah. When it is difficult to ask for help, it, the relationship needs to be built, obviously. And I think there comes a certain level of trust mm-hmm. and understanding when it's not so hard for me okay, or difficult. I mean, there, there are definitely certain guys over the years now that I've built those relationships with. I, I would say five years ago, four years ago, I don't think I had anybody like that. Okay. You know, it's been in the last four years that I've really honed in on some of these relationships and and nurtured them enough to be able to ask for help. I was just curious because I know for, I mean, I know there are times when it's hard for me, although likewise, over the last few years, I've really cultivated a handful of friendships that, you know, whether it's an emergency medical situation or, you know, something as simple as, I'm running late. I need someone to pick up my children or we've got a family crisis. I need help. You know, there are a few of those friends now that I don't think five years ago I had. I I know five years ago I did not have. And, and so it's one of those things where with this particular girlfriend, um, in my mind, the thought for them being alone for Christmas right. was very, very bothersome, you know, because she has become such a close friend over the last two years, um, her son and Abby have gone to school together. She's just been someone that on so many levels I've connected with Mm -hmm. and very sad that they're going to a different base. Um, because we've seen each other (laughs) for the last two school years every day. And you know, I'm so thankful to my in-laws that it was never a question of having two more adults and three more children for Christmas. It was just, this is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. We don't let people be by themselves on Christmas. I mean, that's kind of, you know, you guys have heard that's how we view Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving or Christmas is not our holiday. So I have to ask to invite a few more, but you know, do you go out of your way? If you know someone's going to be by themselves, do you, do you say, Hey, come join us. And, and here's the other thing. When you do open yourself up that way, you are opening yourself up maybe to a point where, you in your mind it's a no-brainer they're gonna come over but they may have something else that they already had planned they may not feel comfortable so don't take it hard if somebody goes you know what i can't make it Mm -hmm. i think that's what stops a lot of us from asking people for help is are they going to reject me and that rejection is what ends up stopping us cold right And when you just put it out there and just go, hey, I know you guys might not be able to 
be or you may not be somewhere for this holiday. And I mean, we're talking about holidays because that's where we are right now. It, they may say no, but it's it's OK. And, and that's, you know, if for me, I would much rather have friends, you know, whether I mean, we invited Abby's entire class, entire class for Thanksgiving and no one came. And that was fine. I would much rather have put the invitation out there and had everyone say, you know what? We've got plans. We're going here. We're going there. Mm -hmm. And to know that they're all covered than to have gotten over the Thanksgiving break and found out, oh, yeah, we just stayed home because, you know, we're new to the area and we didn't have anywhere to go. And, you know, think about for us, obviously, we've talked about this before. We we live in a military community. But I want to bring something up because we're talking about friendships and everything. And one thing that does have to happen in a friendship is it needs to be nurtured. Yes. And so I think a lot of times we, sp- we spread ourselves thin. We, oh, I got that friend and I got this friend and I got this friend and I got that friend. And our, and our friendships are very shallow. It, it's almost what can happen to our relationships and our marriage because we don't dig deep with any of them. You know, it, it's just, it's ground surface. I mean, you could, you could scrape your hand across the top of the soil and you're pulling it out. I mean, what you want to do is some friendships and that maybe you need to really look at those friendships, just like you look at your spouse and go, which one or two are very important to me. Mm -hmm. And it's probably those ones that really put a smile on your face. They're not, as we talk about bucket dipping, (laughs) we've talked about it before or bucket (laughs) fillers. These are, these are folks who fill your bucket and you fill theirs. And it might be those people that you really start to grow together. Now, it could be through a Bible study. It might be one of those things that I've I've done before where I've met with a with a guy at a coffee shop for a number of months and we would just talk and we would go over some scripture together. It it just allowed for us to talk and dig deeper into each other's lives and ask questions. And even though I'm not meeting up with him as of recently, I know I could still call him and ask him. Mm-hmm. There are other friendships though that I'm I'm cultivating now that I've just moved on a little, and he has too. We're just in different spots, you know. And I make sure that I go grab lunch maybe once a month with one of the guys. You know, I'm on the phone with another guy a couple times a week. So there there are ways that you can cultivate that and you may think oh my goodness it's something else i got to do well it's almost like our daily walk with jesus christ and i'm saying this because i need to hear it too if we want to have this relationship with our savior of the world we need to talk to him so do you do that and i'm and i'm pointing directly at me when i say that Do I talk to him once a week and hope that I can have this amazing relationship or do I need to be in the Bible or do I need to be in my devotional six, seven times a week? Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not there, you know, Uh, I mean, so I think you can really parallel this with our walk with Jesus and going, okay, I want my relationships here on earth with friends to be strong. Well, I need to cultivate those and I need to be in them. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, whether it's, it's a friendship with, you know, your best girlfriend or it's a friendship with your spouse, you have to, you have to put into them if you're going to get anything out of them. And, you know, it's taken me years to get here. Um, you know, I remember in the early years of our marriage, I was very much, you know, very much a loner, very, in, you know, just to myself. And I remember one point in time, I was like, don't you need friends? Don't you need, <laughs> don't you like need women to hang out with, you know, something. And, you know, over the last, it probably has been about five years now, mm-hmm. probably about five years, probably when Alex started preschool. Um, I just started being blessed with these women that came into my life and some of them have been around for the last, you know, five years and some of them have been in and out Mm -hmm. based on what's going on in their own lives and our lives. And, and yet I have this handful of friends now or a couple handfuls who, if something happened tomorrow, 
would rally around me, organize my life and just be there. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that with certainty. I know that I had, you know, it's kind of like, you know, your emergency numbers. I've got that group of friends who, you know, very much like my son did tonight would sacrifice for me and not consider it sacrifice. Right. You know, who would say, this is, this is what needs to happen. And and for, for husbands and those of you who have younger kids and you may not be doing this, you may go, Hey, my kid needs his mom or her mom. And so you don't take the kids enough. It may be time. And I can only say this from experience because I didn't do a good job at this at, at all. When, when Alex was young, I mean, I just, I just wouldn't let Elisa get out because I was like, well, what am I going to do with this kid? Um, it wasn't until Abby came around that I realized that Elisa needed to get away from her kids and have some time with women. So if you're noticing that your wife is a little tense, she needs to get away. Maybe she wants to go find or not find, but she wants to get out with her girlfriends. You may need to pick it up and just go, honey, I'll take care of the kid or the kids. I, I will, I'll step up to the plate. I had to learn this myself. It was tough. Um, there were many, many a nights where my kids would just cry and I would go crazy. But you know what? I know I was filling Elisa's bucket. As much as I was spent by the time she got home, I know that a lot of good came out of that. So you need to really consider where you're at and find that time where she can get away. Or if you're a full-time stay-at-home dad, it's vice versa. Hey, mom, can you take the kids tonight Mm -hmm. while dad gets away for a little bit? Yeah, I think, you know, it's important for spouses to foster those same sex relationships, whether it's, you know, the, the wife or the husband, you need to have, you need to have people outside of your marriage that also energize you. Yeah. And this, these are not, these are not relationships where it's husband bashing and wife bashing. To me, those are not, those are not good and they need to be severed immediately. Yeah. And you know, you specifically heard me say same sex friendships Mm -hmm. um, for a reason. And you know, it it has to be, I remember we got it. I had gotten an email from Facebook a few months ago um, from a woman who was, you know, we were talking about making friendships and she had moved to a new place. And, and that was one of the things I said, I said, you need to find women who are going to be encouraging. Mm hmm. You know, when you've got your circle of friends, that's not to say that there aren't times that we don't gripe about our husbands or vice versa. They, you know, they gripe about us, but you don't want to be sitting with a group of people and, and, you know, who are just, everybody's railing on their husband and it's just this total bash. Right. Guys can do no good. They're just, you know, they can't take care of the kids. They can't take care of the house. They, you know, and you come home and you're like, you look at your husband and you're like thinking, well, what good are you? That's not what we're talking about. Nope. I'm talking about spending time with women who build you up, who are there to listen if you're having an issue in your marriage, Mm. but who are going to encourage you and direct you and speak to you truthfully. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole thing about being a true friend is that there are times when being a true friend really stinks because sometimes you have to speak truth to your friends and that's not always easy. Nope. It's not easy to say you're screwing up. It's not easy to say you made a bad decision. <coughs> Excuse me. Elise has been having this cough that <coughs> Miss Abigail gave her. Yeah, that's that motherhood part. Um, but so much in a true friendship where, like Tony said, you know, you've, you've developed that trust. You've developed those roots to that relationship when spoken out of love and in a spirit of love, those relationships should be able to weather the truth. Yep. It it might, you know, definitely there are times when it puts a strain on a relationship, but you will know who your true friends are because they can handle, (laughs) you know, it's kind of like that line out of a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Your true friends can. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that just like my son who I look at him and, this little boy and you know, this other 
little boy that whose mom made the comment to me and it was probably one of the best compliments I've ever received about Alex. So another mom looks at me and says, you know what, Al- you know what my son says about Alex? And I said, no idea. You know, um, she said, he says, Alex is always his friend. Mm. Not when it's convenient, not when there's nobody else to play with. Uh, just always. Yeah. And that was one of those comments that I heard and I thought, okay, that's the kind of man I want my son to be. Whether your child's an athlete or, you know, the head of the science club or whatever, I want to know that my son is your friend always. Right. And that's the type of person that I want to be. You know, I mean, that's, that's a lesson to me that no matter who, who I'm friends with, it shouldn't be circumstantial. Mm-hmm. If I if I'm going to consider you a friend and you likewise, then I need to be your friend always. Right. You know, and it just words of wisdom or life lessons, I guess, from an eight year old. You know, teaching his mom. Yeah. A few. Uh, a few things. A few things. Nice. So, a couple of things before we wrap up tonight. Um, Amazon. Amazon. Those of you who like me are doing your last minute. Christmas shopping with two weeks to go. Please click through uh, on the resources page, the Amazon link that is an affiliate program. And so we do get a small commission out of, of all purchases made through that link. And so we appreciate that. We still have some copies of Strip Down. If you'd like to purchase that for a friend or a loved one for Christmas, mm-hmm. you can put blowout in the coupon code and you'll get it for $10 plus shipping and handling. And Tuesday, the day that you are first able to listen to this podcast uh december 14th is the last day of the top 10 marriage blogs yes contest um so if you haven't voted yet and you're listening to this on tuesday vote hit pause or actually just you know we're wrapping this up so just wait until we finish and go through um to the maryblogger.com and mm-hmm. look, you'll see on there the... Uh, or you can go on to oneextraordinarymarriage.com and right on the right-hand side, click it, and you'll get right over there. But please vote for us. Yep. We don't know where we are in the standings, but... Uh, we, we hope to be one of the top 10. We hope to be one of the top 10. We know lots of you have already voted, but if not, this is your... Tuesday is your last day, so please do so. Um, on the 14th as well, it was six years ago that we lost our son, Andrew, to an early pregnancy, and... So we have Alex's birthday on the 13th and then we have Andrew who's in heaven with great grandma Blanche and everybody else. So our prayer is that those of you who have gone through this time in your life, that you know that your child is up there in heaven and one of these days we'll all get up there and we'll see him again. But it's, it's, it's always a tough time. I know for Elisa to go through, And I just want you to know that we're here. If you've gone through it and you need a little, a little pick me up or a a nudge, don't hesitate to email Elisa at Elisa at one extraordinary marriage.com. Ask Elisa. Ask Elisa at one extraordinary marriage.com. And we would be more than happy to contact you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This year I think we'll actually, Abby got a book, um, by the author of The Kissing Hand, Audrey Penn. And um, it's a little story about a raccoon. The Kissing Hand is a different book. But um, this one talked about making a memory yeah. for uh, somebody that had died, a squirrel who had died. And uh, I think this year on Andrew's birthday, we will probably start making memories um, because it was something that Abby what? has, uh, Abby liked. And I think it's, I think I'm ready. Okay. And, um, you know, it's hard to believe it's been six years. I know. I know. Hard to believe. So on the sad note <laughs> that we're wrapping up this podcast. Um, but on a happy note, we want you to know that we're here. And you are not alone. Right. Whether right. it's in marriage or child loss or whatever it is, we've walked a lot of these paths. And so have many in this community. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to reach out. Um, sometimes just that first act of reaching out and making a connection with someone is the hardest. But once you realize you're not alone, there's so much empowerment in that. And it just, just know you're not alone out there. 
Right. So on that note, everyone, we love you guys. Have a fantastic week. Thanks for listening to the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast. We would love to hear from you. You can go ahead and give us a call at area code 858-876-5663 or send us an email to info at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. The website is oneextraordinarymarriage.com. And while you're there, you can sign up for our Marriage Minute Monday newsletter and you can also purchase Tony and Elisa's new book, Stripped Down. It's available now in print, audio, and ebook formats. Also, the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast has sponsorship opportunities available now. If your business is interested in sponsoring this podcast, please contact us at oneextraordinarymarriage.com.